Protection Squadron have inspected two Danish trawlers 90 miles off the coast of Scotland. Nothing illegal was found. From the fishing centre of Espierre, Michael Cole describes the mood of the Danish skippers. It's Europe's most efficient fishing fleet, or as Scottish fishermen see it, the most ruthless. Only at New Year is the harbour crowded. The rest of the time, the 350 boats are out crisscrossing the North Sea. Virtually all their fishing is done outside their own waters. The smaller vessels take cod, herring and mackerel from around Britain's coasts. The big industrial trawlers scoop up pout and smaller fry to feed the three fish meal plants whose chimneys dominate the harbour. Talk among fishermen this New Year's Eve is only of the uncertain future. When they put back to sea, some are threatening to fish right up to British beaches. They believe that joining the EEC carried with it that understanding. But many are worried about being arrested by Royal Navy and other British patrol boats, as the chairman of their association explained. Of course, the fishermen are very concerned about it. They, they don't want any confrontation. In fact, they want to avoid confrontation with the British Navy. But one must be aware that they also want to practice their, their rights, their legal right to fish. Unlike the Icelanders, who had a force of gunboats to try and protect their interests, the Danish men are expecting no support from their navy, as their government is only reluctantly backing their stand. This vessel is just for training weekend reservists. As the deadline draws near, the Danes are determined that their auction hall will be filled by this time next week with fish from the British, or as they see it, European waters. So as Britain prepares to celebrate the 10th anniversary of its membership of the EEC by squaring up to one of its oldest and closest allies, so Danish fishermen prepare to put to sea to confront British patrol boats and the Royal Navy. The Republic of Ireland's Navy of six ships has been put on alert to deal with any attempt by Danish vessels to fish illegally in Irish waters. The Dublin government wants extra powers from the EEC to deal with the trawlers operating inside their territorial limits. They'll put on trial any Danish skipper caught fishing illegally after midnight. In Zimbabwe, dissidents have killed six people and kidnapped two others in two separate attacks. A white family and their black security guard were ambushed on the highway between Victoria Falls and Bulawayo. All six were shot dead, among them two children aged two and four. North of Bulawayo, gunmen kidnapped a white farmer in his 70s and his grandson. The kidnappers say they're supporters of the opposition leader, Joshua Nkomo. They're demanding the return of 11 farms belonging to Mr Nkomo and his Zapu party, which were confiscated by the government earlier this year. The BBC's correspondent in Warsaw, Kevin Ruane, has been told by the Polish authorities that he will no longer be allowed to report from Poland and must leave the country by next Friday. The authorities said the reason for their action against Ruane, who was assigned to Warsaw last April, was the Panorama programme Two Weeks in Winter, broadcast on BBC One earlier this month. According to officials in Warsaw, this programme did propaganda damage to Poland. A BBC spokesman refused to accept that the Panorama programme or the BBC's Polish language service contained propaganda. It's the first time since the Polish crisis began that a correspondent from a major Western news organisation has been expelled and comes only a day after the suspension of martial law. The Foreign Office has told the Polish Embassy in London of its concern over the move. Mrs Thatcher has made it pla plain that she won't start planning for the next election for the next five months at least. During a New Year interview, she was asked if she preferred to go to the polls in the summer or the autumn. Her reply was emphatic. I'm a true disarmer. A true disarmer. That is, I want armaments reduced on both sides. And I want them... Well, the Prime Minister's also appealed uh, to people to buy British goods to help an employment, and, as you've heard, on nuclear disarmament, she said that few people were taken in by Labour's view that it should be only on one side. I'm a true disarmer. A true disarmer. That is, I want armaments reduced on both sides, and I want them reduced in such a way that our defences are still sure, because they're balanced with those of the potential aggressor. And I want it not only in nuclear, in conventional as well. 
And that is a line we have taken and will continue to take. Mrs Thatcher, a year ago you said that Britain was through the worst. Now, although inflation has come down, hasn't the position worsened for all those who've lost their jobs last year and for the millions on the poverty line? I think on the whole we rode the storm last year very well, but I would agree with you that unemployment's got worse. It is partly the world situation, partly that we're not getting enough share of our home market, partly that some of the new technologies are taking over. So for those who are unemployed, yes, it is very difficult indeed. But you've seen as the great shopping spree that we've had at the end of this year, that means there is demand, and I just hope that sufficient number of people are buying a goodly proportion of British goods. Do you see any sign of unemployment coming down next year, or are you prepared to fight a general election with unemployment at record levels? I don't think any of us can conjure up jobs out of thin air. You can only conjure up jobs by having satisfied customers. That is a long process. It's something which is afflicting us the world over. So I really haven't a great deal of choice except to create the kind of conditions in which new jobs can be created. The Prime Minister with Brian Kertoys. The opposition leader, Michael Foote, in his New Year message has said Labour's task for 1983 is to show the nation that it had a civilised and constructive alternative to what he called a Thatcherite cutthroat society. Mr Foote said that more than six million people were living on the poverty line. For them, Thatcherism meant sheer stark poverty on a scale unknown for nearly half a century. An RAF phantom pilot and his navigator are facing court-martial in West Germany next month after the shooting down of another RAF jet during a training exercise. The plane was hit by a heat-seeking Sidewinder missile. Flight Lieutenants Roy Lawrence and Alistair Inverarity, based at RAF Wildenrath near Dusseldorf, are denying charges of negligence. If found guilty, they could face imprisonment. They're accused of negligently causing the loss of a Jaguar jet. The plane, worth about four million pounds, crashed into a field, but the pilot ejected safely. Hundreds of demonstrators surrounded the American air base at Upper Hayford in Oxfordshire today in another protest against nuclear weapons. The base is home for 71 F-111 nuclear bombers. The demonstrators formed human blockades at every gate in what they called a peace chain. Police stood by in case of trouble but weren't needed. But there were angry exchanges at the village pub. The landlord refused to serve the protesters because he says most of his customers are American servicemen. Canon John Collins, founder member of the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament and Canon of St Paul's for 33 years, died today after a heart attack. He was 77. Canon Collins was a controversial figure, outspoken on many socialist policies, particularly disarmament. He took part in the big Aldermaston marches and in 1961 was one of more than a thousand people arrested at a demonstration in Trafalgar Square. Even after his resignation from CND, he still campaigned vigorously for socialist policies. He said the question for Christians was not whether they should become involved in politics, but how. The Minister of State for Northern Ireland said today he'd resign if there was a shoot-to-kill policy for security forces in Ulster. Lord Gary, who's a Catholic, said he'd already denied in Parliament that there'd been any change in security policy, but he was worried about recent incidents.